What's good, fam? It's Teacher Ready back with another reaction. Want to welcome our newest Patreon, Win. Win reacted, uh, asked that I react uh, to George Carlin about uh, abortion and the sanctity of life. I've uh, actually not seen this before. Uh, again, I'm a historian, not a scientist, so I can't speak to most of the science of abortion, but. Uh, I was asked to react to this by our newest Patreon. If you want to support the show, please check out the Patreon link in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. Well, let's get back to this abortion shit. Now, is a fetus a human being? This seems to be the central question. Well, if a fetus is a human being, how come the census doesn't count them? If a fetus is a human being, how come when there's a miscarriage, they don't have a funeral? If a fetus is a human being, how come people say we have two children and one on the way instead of saying we have three children? People say life begins at conception. I say life began about a billion years ago and it's a continuous process. <laughs> continuous just keeps rolling along. Rolling, rolling, rolling along. I say, you know something? I will say this for Carlin. He was definitely clever. Uh, I could see why a lot of people consider him to be a genius when it comes to comedy. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan, but I did appreciate a lot of his stand-up. Uh, he's playing to the home base here, so of course the audience is going to applaud everything that he says, because they pay to go and see him, so obviously they're fans. Uh, I don't agree with some of the things that, you know, he brings up as examples, uh, such as, uh, you know, why don't we count them for the census? Well, because they haven't been born yet, but... The key word here is yet. We're still talking about a person. Um, where do I stand on this? I am pro-choice. Uh, so in, in, in cases of um, incest or molestation um, or uh, violent acts of abuse, of course, we're not allowed to say that word on YouTube. The algorithm doesn't like it. Um, Absolutely, 100%. No term limits, no nothing. Um, I'm all for it. When it comes to abortion and no issues whatsoever, which is the vast majority um, of abortions, you know, there's no crime that was committed, there was no abuse, there was nothing like that. Um, I feel that after 12 weeks, which for most people, you know, I know there are some exceptions. People are going to say, well, Eddie, you know, some women don't know. They don't know they're pregnant after four weeks, six weeks, 12 weeks, 20 weeks. Look, those are few and far in between from my experience with friends, family, personally. You know when you're pregnant, you know, you know, three months is, is more than enough. Usually three months is, is the marker point where you know it's going to keep. Uh, so if you can't make a decision within 12 weeks, I'm sorry, I'm not for it. That's a person at that point. That's just my opinion. You could disagree with it. We're all entitled to our opinions. I don't believe Roe v. Wade should have been overturned, but my personal feeling is 12 weeks, you know, why don't you have funerals for miscarriages? Well, sometimes there's nothing to bury, unfortunately. But I have known cases of friends uh, who actually did have memorials after a miscarriage. Um, so again, I mean, he's making points that, yeah, on the surface, but if you start digging a little bit, eh. Listen, you can go back further than that. What about the carbon atoms? Huh? <laughs> Human life could not exist without carbon. So is it just possible that maybe we shouldn't be burning all this coal? Well, we shouldn't be burning coal, just that's for sure. Just a little consistency here in these anti-abortion arguments. See, the really hardcore people will tell you life begins at fertilization. Fertilization when the sperm fertilizes the egg, which is usually a few moments after the man says, gee, honey, I was going to pull out, but the phone rang and it startled me. <laughs> fertilization. 
But even after the egg is fertilized, it's still six or seven days before it reaches the uterus and pregnancy begins. And not every egg makes it that far. 80% of a woman's fertilized eggs are rinsed and flushed out of her body once a month during those delightful few days she has. <laughs> They wind up on sanitary napkins, and yet they are fertilized eggs. So basically what these anti-abortion people are telling us is that any woman who's had more than one period is a serial killer. <laughs> Consistency. Again, semantics at this point. He's, he's, you know, he's making, he's making fun of it. He's making fun of it very well. Uh, but if you scratch the surface of the argument again, it, it, it really doesn't hold any water. See. Consistency. Hey, hey, if they really want to get serious, what about all the sperm that are wasted when the state executes a condemned man and one of these pro-life guys who's watching comes in his pants, huh? <laughs> Here's a guy standing over there with his jockey shorts full of little Vinnies and Debbies, and nobody's saying a word to that guy. Not every ejaculation deserves a name. Now, Speaking of consistency, Catholics, which I was until I reached the age of reason. <laughs> Again, he's, he's very Catholics funny. Catholics and other Christians are against abortions and they're against homosexuals. Well, who has less abortions than homosexuals? <laughs> Leave these fucking people alone. Okay, fair point. I will agree with him on that. Alone, for Christ's sakes. Here is an entire class of people guaranteed never to have an abortion. And the Catholics and Christians are just tossing them aside. You'd think they'd make natural allies. Go look for consistency in religion. And speaking to my friends, the Catholics, when John Cardinal O'Connor of New York and some of these other cardinals and bishops have experienced their first pregnancies and their first labor pains and they've raised a couple of children on a minimum wage, then I'll be glad to hear what they have to say about abortion. I'm sure it'll be interesting. Enlightening, too. But, but, in the meantime, what they ought to be doing is telling these priests who took a vow of chastity to keep their hands off the altar boys. Yeah. You know, when Jesus said, suffer the little children, come unto me, that's not what he was talking about. <laughs> okay, that was chef's kiss. Suffer the children, come unto you. <laughs> So you know what I tell these anti-abortion people? I say, hey, hey, if you think a fetus is more important than a woman, try getting a fetus to wash the shit stains out of your underwear. You For damn no right. Okay, no all right, George, you go. I tell them, think of an abortion as term limits. That's all it is, biological term limits. But you know, the longer you listen to this abortion debate, the more you hear this phrase, sanctity of life. You've heard that, sanctity of life. You believe in it? Personally, I think it's a bunch of shit. <laughs> well, I mean, life is sacred? Who said so? God? Hey, if you read history, you realize that God is one of the leading causes of death. <laughs> Has been for thousands of years. Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Christians, all taking turns killing each other because God told them it was a good idea. <laughs> The sword of God, the blood of the lamb, vengeance is mine. Millions of dead motherfuckers. Millions of dead motherfuckers, all because they gave the wrong answer to the God question. You believe in God? No. <laughs> dead. You believe in God? Yes. You believe in my God? No. <laughs> dead. My God has a bigger dick than your God. of years thousands of years and all the best wars too the bloodiest most brutal i get it he's he's veering a little off the point here uh, i appreciate the angry old man routine uh but again all these people he's talking about who you know get killed during war and all that 
uh, and the sanctity of life again on the surface you're like wow that makes a lot of sense but those people were born in the first place so it kind of goes against the whole abortion debate here wars fought all based on religious hatred which is fine with me hey anytime a bunch of holy people want to kill each other i'm a happy guy <laughs> But don't be giving me all this shit about the sanctity of life. I mean, even if there were such a thing, I don't think it's something you can blame on God. Now, you know where the sanctity of life came from? We made it up. You know why? Because we're alive. <laughs> Self-interest. Living people have a strong interest in promoting the idea that somehow life is sacred. You don't see Abbott and Costello running around talking about this shit, do you? We're not hearing a whole lot from Mussolini on the subject. What's the latest from JFK? Not a goddamn thing. Because JFK, Mussolini, and Abbott and Costello are fucking dead. They're fucking dead. And dead people give less than a shit about the sanctity of life. Yeah, but the other counterpoint is that is what makes life sacred, is we only get one, well, again, depending on, upon your beliefs, uh, we only get one, and it is sacred. I mean, absolutely, life is sacred. Only living people care about it, so the whole thing grows out of a completely biased point of view. It's a self-serving, man-made bullshit story. It's one of these things we tell ourselves so we'll feel noble. Life is sacred. Makes you feel noble. Well, let me ask you this. If everything that ever lived is dead, and everything alive is gonna die, where does the sacred part come in? <laughs> I'm having trouble with that. Because I mean, the time even you're the living. we preach about the sanctity of life, we don't practice it. We don't practice it. Look at what we kill. Mosquitoes and flies, because they're pests. <laughs> Lions and tigers, because it's fun. <laughs> Chickens and pigs, because we're hungry. <laughs> Pheasants and quails, because it's fun. And we're hungry. <laughs> and people, we kill people. Because they're pests. <laughs> and it's fun! <laughs> and you might have noticed something else. The sanctity of life doesn't seem to apply to cancer cells, does it? You rarely see a bumper sticker that says, Save the tumors. <laughs> or I break for advanced melanoma. <laughs> Ah, viruses, mold, mildew, maggots, fungus, weeds, E. coli, bacteria, the crabs. <laughs> Nothing sacred about those things. So at best, the sanctity of life is kind of a selective thing. We get to choose. I mean, like I said, when you look at the surface, you're like, oh, wow, you know, he's making so much sense. And I guess, yeah. Uh, but then when you start digging, I mean, really, are you going to compare a fetus to a cancer cell or the crabs? Uh, it seems a little off to me once you start digging below the surface. So I, I can't agree with that. Choose which forms of life we feel are sacred and we get to kill the rest. <laughs> Pretty neat deal, huh? You know how we got it? We made the whole fucking thing up. <laughs> made it up the same way. Thank you. All right, there goes that video. So what did I think of it? Uh, again, I, I mentioned it a few times during the reaction. I felt uh, it was funny. It was structured well. Uh, it fits the George Carlin personality. Uh, and the arguments are interesting and funny, but he really veered off the whole abortion debate. Uh, he really, I mean, I would say 70% of it had nothing to do with abortions. Uh, but I do know it's called George Carlin about abortion and the sanctity of life. Um, but it just didn't fit the narrative, uh, very well. Cause most of the time he was talking about people who get killed. Uh, but those people had the opportunity to be born and there are evil people in the world. There will always be evil people in the world, but we can't kill on the chance that, oh, it may grow to be another Hitler or Mussolini. Um, but I've made my opinions known. Let me know in the comment section what you think. 
Um, do you think Roe v. Wade should have been overturned? I've never really asked uh, my audience. This is really the first time I was kind of trepidatious about doing a reaction like this. Uh, but I figured, why not? It sounded interesting enough. It's coming from George Carlin. And it was requested by, again, our newest Patreon, Win. Uh, so, Win, thank you very much for the suggestion. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments section what other videos you'd like to see. And uh, if you'd like to support the show, again, check out all the links in the description from Discord to Patreon, etc. I'm Teacher Eddie, and I will catch you in the next video. Fam! And shouting out the Patreons as always, the Chancellors, Alex S. and John Alonzo, and the Principals, Chad A. and Clement. Thank you for watching, and tune in next time.